Hi, welcome to the shed. Today I'm going to show you how to use NoteFlight on the iPad. Now, one of the great things about the iPad is its small size, but that also means that um, we have to be really aware of how much real estate we have on our screen. I think that NoteFlight is best used when the iPad is in landscape mode. And now we need to talk about the tool palettes. So if you click on the hamburger, which is these, which are these little three lines up here, you can access all the tools in NoteFlight. So if you need to do like a one shot of a tool, you can click on the hamburger, click on the arrow, and then you can click on a tool. But if there's a tool you're going to use a lot, you're going to want to put it in your palette because if you see, it took up most of our screen just by bringing up um, all these tools. So the uh, toolbars that I recommend putting on your palette are edit. So you double tap on the toolbar category and it'll add it up there. Um, I want duration, I want pitch, I got double tap on pitch, there you go, um, measure, and that's pretty much it. Those are the ones that I think you can do a, a lot of damage with at the beginning. You can write in notes, you can edit their durations, you can erase notes, and you can undo and redo if needed. So no, uh, NoteFlight is an after the fact notation program. What does that mean? That means that you can click on a note and then you can alter that note after you've created it. So let's say I wanna make that note a different pitch. Um, to change pitch on the iPad, you have to use the keyboard. To toggle the keyboard on and off, you press on the keyboard icon over here, it brings it up. Now you could use a typing keyboard um, if you connect it to your iPad via Bluetooth or um, USB. This makes note input faster and it also opens up more real estate on your screen. So let's say I wanted to make this a different note. Let's say I wanted to make it an A. So you need to use the uh, the musical keyboard here, if you don't know how the musical keyboard works, they've given you some helper letters here. We know this is C, we know this is C. The musical alphabet is the same as our regular alphabet, except it repeats after G. So you can just count up. If this is C, we want A, C, D, E, F, G. After G, we get A, so this is A. So I have the, the note I wanna change, highlighted it, and now I'm gonna press A, and it changes it to A. Another way to do that is by using these pitch arrow keys. Depending on your understanding of the musical keyboard, you might want to use those pitch arrow keys. So let's say I wanted to bring it back up to C. I could press on C on the musical keyboard, or I can press up two times on the uh, pitch arrows. So now it's back to a C. Okay, so let's say I made an error and I want to go back. You can press the back button to undo. That's right there. So now it's back to a B and now it's back to an A. If you wanted to delete a note, you just highlight the note and you turn and you press the trash can and it's going to turn it into a rest. Not all notes are going to be dotted eighth notes. We need to be able to change the duration of these notes. And we do that using the duration toolbar. So uh, this is a dotted eighth. Maybe I want it to be a well, let me click on my dotted eighth rest again. Oh boy. Let me click on a dotted eighth rest again. Let's say I wanted to make that a quarter rest. So you can just click on the quarter rest up there and it changes it to a quarter rest. And now I can change it to a different note. Maybe I want to make it a G. I'm just going to click on G. And now it is a quarter note. And you see the durations changed from rests up there to notes. So maybe I want it to uh, be two eighth notes. So I have it highlighted. Now I'm going to click on my eighth note. And now it created an eighth note. I want to play another G here. So I could press on G because it already highlighted the next object. It automatically goes to the next object. Um, and if I wanted to tie a note, let me uh, make this a cool, let's do a cool syncopated rhythm. And let's do another G after that. But let's make it an eighth rest, an eighth note. And I want it to be tied. So you can use the tie button there and it automatically ties it. And let's have a tie to that, uh, that eighth note G right there. But, bon, uh. All right, now if I wanted to add a measure, you can highlight a measure. Up here, if you, if you click on the little, the little bar above the measure, you can uh, delete the measure by clicking the minus sign, or you can add it, you can click these little pluses. I think they're really hard to get with your finger without selecting something else. So um, what I do is I just use these icons. So if I wanted to add a measure, I can just press plus, or I can delete a measure the same way. If I wanted to um, change the accidental of a note, highlight the note first. Remember, it is a an after the fact. Um, and then you can add in your accidentals. I can sharp it, I can flat it. Or when you're, pl when you're uh, initially putting in your note, you can um, play in the sharps and flats on your musical keyboard.
If you need to write in texts, let's say you want to write in chord symbols or you want to write in lyrics, um, you need to use the lyrics tool. So uh, you could put it in the toolbar if you want. Let me put that in the toolbar. I'm going to double tap it. Now I have that um, palette in my toolbar. And it, let's say I want to put a chord above this note. So you're going to put in a chord, which will be this little chord icon. And then you could put in your chord name. Let's say it's a D minor 7. There we go. I've got my D minor 7 over beat 3 of that second measure. Once you know the most effective workflow for note flight in the iPad, you can get a whole lot done and you can get composing faster. See you in the shed.